Hey, today's video is on browser MCP. Browser MCP is one of the most useful MCPs you can find. There's a few different MCPs that control your browser, but I'm going to show you this one. It's really cool. It's a Chrome extension. You can see I have it connected up here. And what it allows you to do is automate your browser with AI. Now, why is this helpful? There are two good use cases for this, and I'm going to show you both of them in practice. One is automated testing, and the other one is task automation. To get started Google Browser MCP and go and install it into your browser, you'll basically get something like this that pops up. And to get it to work, there are three steps. Once you first load it, you'll get to this documentation, but you can also go to this URL and you'll see the first step is set up the MCP server. So let's say I'm going to use cursor in this video. You basically go to the MCP tab and copy and paste this in. That's all you need to do. And then maybe hit the refresh icon. The next step is to set the extension. So you can pin it, I pinned it over here and then we hit connect. So I'm going to do that right now. And here you can see the browser MCP can now automate this browser. And then the last step is start automating. So we can do something like this in cursor or Claude code. So I'm going to show you this in cursor and how it actually works. And here you can see I have my MCP set up and all the different actions it can take. Now I just added a new onboarding flow to Inbox Zero and I want to make sure there aren't any bugs in it. Inbox Zero is an AI email assistant, it's open source, go check it out, give it a star on GitHub. But here you can see I'm writing, check the onboarding flow of our product. We're already logged in. You can just go to localhost 3000 slash onboarding using browser MCP and go from there. So I'm going to hit enter, send, and let's see what happens over here. So I'm using Claude 4.1 Opus, but you can use any AI you want. Any LLM is calling Browser Navigate. Here you can see what is gone and done. It's gone to this URL, which is the URL we requested. And you can see it's gone and loaded up my screen. This is the new onboarding flow. I hope you like it. You can see we are on step two now of the onboarding. So hopefully it's going to click some of these features that it wants and then continue with the flow. You can see it's actually got a long list of to do's. So, so here it's actually gone and read my code as well to create these to do's, but you can see the mouse moving on screen and it's going to select each item and go through the flow and check that everything's working and that I don't have any bugs or anything I should be paying attention to. You can see here it's gotten to the next screen, which is gray. It needs to decide wh what type of user I am. So hopefully it will go and pick one over here. You can see mouse moving, click hopefully and it will keep going. And so typically this takes quite some time. So you would run it in the background, but you can see our onboarding flow is doing quite well. So this is really nice and it's doing exactly what's expected. So instead of me having to pay a QA person potentially or write other types of tests, I could just do a feature, leave this running in the background and ask it if it's noticed any issues. Typically I wouldn't do this for like small changes, but if there's like a big change to the site and you want it to go through the entire flow, then this is like really good. And you can see it's going step by step. It's doing all of this on its own. Now I'm going to show you another example. This is to help me with my fantasy football team. Now at the beginning of the video, I said it's great for testing. It's great for automated tasks as well. So an automated task, like in a business setting might be go and find 50 companies in this space. That I can go reach out to and get me all their email addresses. So you could maybe go and do that in your browser, like search to LinkedIn and different sites and so on. But you could also just get Claude code or cursor to run that for you in the background. And also there's a big advantage to actually using your real browser. So you come across as a real user, basically, you don't have to do any cloaking or hide yourself or try and do something clever to get around different blockers that are online. And if you do come across a blocker, you might just go and click it yourself to help the AI to continue on its steps. But because it works with your real browser, that's like a really big advantage, like being logged into services and things like that. You don't have to set any of that up in the code. It just works with your browser which is great. So I've told it here, go to this website. I'm logged in, so you don't need to worry about anything around that, which is great. And I've said to use browser MCP to check my team, do some research online and go and suggest some transfers for me, for my team for this week. So let's see what it's doing. It's calling browser navigate. It's gone to this page, which is great. It's actually in this other tab that I've just clicked into. It's reading the page here. You can see some of the players that are available. Sunderland did quite well this week. They beat the West Ham 3-0. So it's, it seems to think some of those players are good. It's also going into table mode or trying to. Table view, okay. Yeah, I've had this error a bit, which is like super annoying. Now it's trying to refresh the page. I'm not sure why this keeps happening. No tab with given ID. Yeah, I don't know what's changed there. But you can see it's going now to do some research. It's searched the web. How has it searched the web? So this is actually just using regular web search from within cursor. 
so you can see some things it's come up with. I'm not sure these are that great. Maybe I would have pasted in some URLs into websites where it can do better research, but you can see, hopefully this will come up with some good ideas. But it's really cool what the AI can do. You can go through it, this page, see my team, see the available players now start to do some web crawling to, to find out what's online. I could even get it to manage my entire team. Honestly, I could get it to like offer trades and like actually run the team fully on its own, which is really cool. And here are the top three recommendations that came up with actually pretty solid overall, given what's available. These are all players that did well this week and they actually have good fixtures coming up in this coming week. So it's good recommendation. So thank you, AI. Maybe I will listen to some of that. Before finishing the video, I want to give a shout out to Stagehand by BrowserBase. This is another way you can automate the browser, basically. BrowserBase, they make it easy to run Playwright uh, on the cloud. Basically, if you've ever had to run Playwright yourself on your own servers, it's a bit annoying. I do it, but it's especially if you have to do it at a scale, it can be really tricky. And if you need like things like proxies or cloaking or whatever. So the uh, browser base is really good for that. And Stagehand is an open source tool. I did a previous video on it and they, I'm mentioning it because it can do similar things to what we saw in this video. Here you can see it can do like page, go to browserstore.com slash cookies, extract some information, take an action, like add first cookie to car and then execute the checkout. And so what's really cool about this is a mix between what we had in the past. So basically regular playwright and a browser agent. Right now we basically just saw a browser agent. We saw the agent are automating the browser, but I couldn't write any code for it that myself. And also if we did an action, like go to the local host 3000 slash onboarding link, click continue every single time the AI is learning afresh how to do that. And it's taking up tokens and it can make mistakes and so on. And so if you want this to be more reliable, it would be better to just have this as page.go to slash onboarding page stop click and so on. And so what Stagehand is able to do is able to cache these results. So the first time it might not know where the continue button is, but the next time it was like, oh, I know the ID for that button. I already clicked it in the past. So now the next test, it doesn't require AI. It could potentially have gone through all seven steps I showed in my onboarding and instead do it without AI because it's cached the, the knowledge from the first time, how it's supposed to work. Maybe there's some analysis that is some AI is needed of the page, but overall it can cut down on a lot of the work. And especially if you're running automations where you do it once and then every other time afterwards is the same. So it's a great solution for that. It's open source. Go check them out. They didn't sponsor this video, sponsored a previous video. So I figured I'd give them another shout out as it's a related topic. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to check out Inbox Zero. Give it a star, 8.6K. Let's get up to 8.7K for the next video.